everyone. Thank you for joining me around the fireside tonight. My name is Joe, and I'm here to tell you a story. Tonight we have a series of short stories. Stories about fireflies and puppies. About bear cubs and fairy rides. Stories of flying and sailing and swimming and dancing. Stories of sleep and of dreams. Presenting four stories tonight. Firstly, Fireflies, written by Carolyn Watson Dubish, followed by Never Been Thirstier by Maya Page. Then, Let's Go Dreaming, and finally, Sleep Tiny Dreamer. The last two, written by Shanita Allen. A truly wonderful selection of stories, the links of which will be in the description of the episode. All of these books have marvellous illustrations and would suit anyone's bedtime. If you like this style of episode, please let me know by leaving a comment, like or review, and subscribing to whatever platform you're listening on. We are also crowdfunding for the continued existence and expansion of the show. Should you wish to get involved, please check out gofundme.com slash talesbythefireside. Everything you do and every interaction you make really does mean the world. Now please, get comfortable, let go of the daylight, and join me for our sleep story collection. Fireflies by Carolyn Watson Dubish. It was two summers ago when I was nine and my sister Caitlin was six. Our family boarded the last ferry of the day that midsummer evening. We were going to visit our great aunt Lily on the island of Nova Scotia. Boat horns echoed across the water as the sun set over the harbour. While we sat in the cabin, Caitlin couldn't stop bouncing around. She had brought her bug collecting jar and couldn't stop talking about all the ladybugs we'd caught back on the pier in Portland. Caitlin never keeps her bugs for very long. She just collects them, peers at them with her magnifying glass and then, a few hours later, releases them. Caitlin, Mama said, Maybe you and Cassidy should go up top and let the ladybugs go. So, carefully, we climbed the stairs to the upper deck. When we burst through the door, the wind was so strong, we nearly fell over. Cassidy, let's release them over there. So we walked across the boat towards the bow near a curious seagull. As Caitlin turned the lid of the jar, the wind suddenly stopped and a fog rolled in across the water. The seagull gave us an angry squawk and then it flew off into the night. Caitlin gently coaxed them out of the jar. I remember hearing a faint tinkling of bells as I watched the ladybugs disappear into the fog. That's when I saw them. Tiny yellow lights zipping all around us. Fireflies, Caitlin whispered in hushed excitement. She cupped her hands around one and pushed it into her jar. I caught one as it flitted past my ear and I carefully brought it over to Caitlin. They moved like lightning and changed direction abruptly, which made them difficult to catch. After ten minutes or so, we grew tired and only managed to catch four or five. I was making one final attempt at one near the benches 
when I heard Caitlin gasp. What is it? I asked, rushing over to her. Caitlin was looking through her magnifying glass, looking very pale. I can't, she whispered, and pushed the jar towards me. Fairies. I looked at Caitlin with my eyes wide. Let them go. Of course, she said. With trembling hands, she quickly unscrewed the lid. Five yellow lights flew up into the mist, and a ringing of bells filled the air. Pink flower petals rained down and covered the deck of the boat. Silently, we collected handfuls of the petals and put them in the jar. Caitlin and I never spoke of the fairies after that night. Caitlin never collected bugs again. The jar of petals grew dust on her bookshelf. The petals never dried up or changed colour. They stayed just as they were that night on the boat. One day, I took the jar down and opened it up. Bells started ringing like wind chimes in a summer storm. Quickly, I screwed the lid back on. The end. Never Been Thirstier by Maya Page Good night, my little baby bear, my sleepy, sweet delight. It's time for bed, lay down your head, and slumber through the night. The sun's gone down, the moon is out. It's quiet, not a peep. All through the forest, little ones like you are off to sleep. The children all around the woods and you, dear sleepy head, are yawning, stretching, brushing teeth and getting into bed. But Mama, I can't stay in bed when I'm so thirsty still. I know I just can't fall asleep. Until I've drunk my fill. A glass of water, cool and fresh. That's what I need, I think. I've never been thirstier, and I've got to have a drink. But, sweetest cub, it's time to sleep. Let's tuck you up in bed. You need to rest your tired bones and calm your sleepy head. Now lay back down and close your eyes and say one last good night and dream of all your favourite things all tucked up nice and tight. Then when you wake, it's breakfast time. We'll have a morning feast with fluffy pancakes freshly made, a stack of them at least, and tasty toast delicious jam, and strawberries, apples, pears, and all the water that you want, a treat for hungry bears. But I'm thirsty, says the bear again, as Mama tucks him in. I'm thirstier than I've ever been, as Mama strokes his chin. I'm thirsty, he cries out once more, as Mama boops his nose. I'm thirsty, I must have a drink, as Mama bids him doze. Oh Mama, all I see is oceans, springs and lakes and rivers. I've never been thirstier, and it's leaving me a quiver. I feel so parched, my lips are dry, my throat is scratchy too. I feel distraught with thirst, dear Mama, what am I to do? I want to dream of running through. The forests and the mountains. I want to dream of splashing in a cool, refreshing fountain. I want to dream of oceans and of diving in head first. I want to sleep. I want to dream. But oh, I've such a thirst. Oh, very well, my baby bear. Let's get you one last glass. Perhaps it's what you really need before you'll sleep at last. A glass of water, 
fresh and cool. Drink up, my darling cub. You're just so thirsty. Here you go. Three big sips. Glub, glub, glub. Now look at that big sleepy grin. A smile all full of joy. You've quenched your thirst. I've tucked you in, my happy baby boy. Now close your eyes, one at a time, and drift away to sleep. The day's been long, the night is here, so slumber, calm and deep. The big bright moon is beaming down on all the creatures sleeping sound. So now you're tucked up nice and tight, I'll bid my sweet baby good night. And as I boop your little nose, you'll drift away to sweetly doze. Oh, one last thing. A good night kiss. And sleep at last in dreamy bliss. What is a dream? Written by Shanita Allen. One starry night, when the sky was super bright, little Ari climbed into bed and turned out the light. I wonder what I'll dream tonight. What places will I go? I guess until I close my eyes, I'll never really know. What is a dream? asked a voice that came from down below. Ari looked at the floor in shock. Say it isn't so. Pepper, was that you? Did you just speak, for heaven's sake? Nah, you're a dog. I'm not dreaming yet. I'm still awake. Pepper looked at Ari and tilted her head to the right. Yep, I can talk, said Pepper, giving Ari quite a fright. First, Ari started screaming and headed for the door. Then she remembered Pepper's my friend and wasn't afraid any more. Ari turned around and walked back towards her friend. I'm sorry I ran away, Pepper. I hope I didn't offend. It's okay, said Pepper, excitedly wagging her tail. I know it's shocking to hear me speak. Just breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Ari sat back on the bed and tried hard to relax. When did you start talking, Pepper? Tell me all the facts. I could always talk, she said. I speak to you every day. And now that you are wiser, you understand what I say. I'm glad that's finally happened and that now we can converse. So many things to talk about, said Pepper. But first things first. What's a dream? asked Pepper. I've heard you mention it before. Is it something you can see and touch? I'm curious. Tell me more. Ari thought for a second. Hmm, where do I start? A dream is a place where you go in your mind, but it lives inside of your heart. You start with a wish, be specific and focus. Then just close your eyes. And bam, hocus pocus. Your dream is right there, in front of your eyes. It could be anything, any shape or any size. Whatever you're hoping for, it's you the dream will find. Make a wish out loud or say it in your mind. Pepper stared at Ari with a curious look on her face. So... Are you able to dream at any time or any place? Yes, said Ari, smiling. I do it all the time. Last week I was dreaming in the grocery checkout line. You can dream in the day. You can dream in the night. You can dream in the dark. You can dream in the light. So what do dreams look like? Asked Pepper with glee. They look like sunshine and rainbows to me. What do dreams sound like? asked Pepper with cheer. They sound like the first sound of morning you hear. Birds chirping and singing and dancing so free 
by the sound of the ocean and waves on the sea. What do dreams smell like? asked Pepper, so kind. Freshly baked cookies are what first come to mind. What do dreams taste like? asked Pepper, so sweet. They taste like strawberries or your favourite treat. What do dreams feel like? asked Pepper with joy. Dreams feel different for every girl and every boy. But to me, Ari said, it's like floating on the moon or dancing on the clouds to your favourite tune. That sounds so exciting, said Pepper. Take me. I'd love to go dreaming and see what you see. Well, Pepper, great news. You can dream your own dream. And of course, you'll come with me. We'll make a great team. So they both made a wish, were specific and focused. Then they closed their eyes tight and bam. Hocus pocus. The end. Sleep, Tiny Dreamer. Written by Shanita Allen. Sleep, tiny dreamer, where will you go tonight? Will you swim across the ocean or will you take a flight? Will you soar into the sky like birds with feathered wings? Or will you go beyond the clouds to discover brand new things? Will you climb a mountain high that's 10,000 feet tall? Or dive beneath the earth's surface with creatures big and small? Will you be a hero, brave, and save the world tonight? Or will you dance among the stars and grace them with your light? Will you write a song so sweet and sing for us to hear with a beautiful melody that makes us shed a tear? Will you be an artist and create a brand new colour? All your pictures so vibrant they make the sun look duller. Will you be a royal highness sitting on a regal throne with gold, jewels, cakes and cookies and the world's largest ice cream cone. Think of all the wonders you can find and all the things that you can be. Close your eyes and dream, my love, and sure enough, you'll see. Sleep, my tiny dreamer, where will you go tonight? I'm sure you'll tell me all about it in... The morning light. The end.